I go walk in this area and this girl walks up to me and goes, hi, I'm Kendra. How are you? And I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like, I'm Julian. I didn't know who the hell you were. I know we're going to be talking a little bit about our first experience when I met you on your birthday a couple of years ago. And I kind of want to play a little game with you. If you're down with that, are you down with playing a yeah, little game? Yeah, I'm actually okay. down. I'm down for whatever. I got to know a little bit about you before I break this down. So can you can you tell us first, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and then I'm going to ask you this or that. And the first thing I'm going to ask you is what your very first dating experience was like. I, it was actually Professor X was like truly like one of my first dates that I considered a date. I didn't even like real, I was so nervous, even though like, okay, so him and I had been, like I've known him since I was eight years old, went to elementary, middle school, high school, didn't even like really even know him in elementary, right? He knew me because I was a tomboy and I was much better at sports than a lot of the boys at that time. I was 14, he was like 16. And it wasn't even really a date. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. I brought my cousin. Like, I was so nervous. I like, she I didn't drive, so she drives over to his house. And um, I don't know. It, it was just so awkward. And he's just like, why the hell like, is she bringing her cousin? So here he is getting in this like Dodge Daytona. My cousin really thought she was fucking cool. You know, it was all blacked out. I thought I was cool. So not cool. Professor X is like, yeah, I'm not dating this chick. She's bringing her cousin. Like, this is fucking lame. We hang out. We get ice cream. And we went home. Like, it was not exciting because I didn't know what to do. Like, Professor X, like, still laughs at me. He's like, yeah, can't even believe that shit. Like, he still messes with me. To Like, that was kind of like our first date. So, there you have it. There's a lot. Asking there's Robbins a lot that went on there. In a Daytona. There's a lot that went on there. And there's a lot of thoughts that come to mind. Especially, like, I'm going to ask some of them. Because, like... You're, you're having your, what is it? Your cousin drive you. So picking you up and then picking up your date in a Daytona yeah, to no go name. to Baskin Robbins where you work at <laughs> and terrible. you guys are getting ice cream, but like, did you guys kiss at all? Or did you guys no. like come close to kissing at all while you're there? Cause I just want to, I wonder like, yeah. is she sitting in the front seat? You two in the back? Like she's your chauffeur. How, how would the, how did this go down? Yeah. He just kind of like hopped in and. You know, like I was in the front, he got in the back, like he was like these, like this bitch, like he had to be thinking that like back in the day, he had, he didn't respect women at that time. You know, like I hate to say it, but most, and I, no offense, but like a lot of times young guys, like they don't know how to treat a woman unless, you know, maybe they have a household, like they're raised, but you know, sometimes they just kind of need a little refining, you know, uh, but I mean, he was respectful, but he, I know what he was thinking, what he was thinking, what he was doing, because let's be real. He's just trying to get down my pants at that point. So he's going to be nice, but I know what he's thinking, right? She's got these big, I had these big, I mean, big, you think, I mean, they were big I, because I had lost weight. So they kind of shrunk a little, but these things were strapped down at my basketball games. I was running down the court. Oh, boom. These things were big. So that's all he saw. It was really nice about it, but I'm surprised I got a call back to be honest. But yeah, of course, he, he definitely, he, you know, he, he wanted to have a date with you and not go on a double date where it's just him dating you and him dating your cousin in the same night um, in the back of a Daytona. Yeah. Uh, did you guys end up going on a second date where it wasn't your cousin driving? Yes, we did. We did. So the date was just kind of very anticlimactic. I mean, on all levels. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I was kind of nerdy and nervous back then, you know. I thought I was hot shit, but when it came down to it, I like literally had zero game. We had another date. Uh, we actually talked a lot on the phone. We had like the phones with long cords and one phone that everyone had to share. So we would stay up for hours on the phone just talking. And we were 10 blocks away, mind you, right? But um, yeah, it was just, it was different then, right? So second date we went to, and it's still there. It's in Centerline, Michigan, which is this little, little two by two square city inside of this big ass city went to china villa i don't even know how the place is still in, in business so he took me to this little chinese restaurant and i love reading my fortune cookies i mean i love them i could eat like 10 10 of them i love them 
Um, I remember what I ordered. I remember what he was wearing. He had these little Nike sandals on. He was so cute. And his little hat. He always wore a North Carolina hat because he loved Michael Jordan. Don't know what I was wearing. Probably something a little sassy. And I ordered almond chicken and egg drop soup. And uh, yeah, it was good. There was a little kiss at the end of that night. Yeah, he picked me up in his white Chevy Cavalier. Good times. Oh wow, a little Cavalier. Was, that's that's something yeah, new. Yeah, it was pimping. But I look, I, I'm with it. I'm all for it. What would be advice? What would be an advice for <sighs> guys taking out girls in your experience? Because you know. <laughs> I've been on a date where I've been in the same shoes of Chuck, um, the Chuck the Cavalier, uh, where I'm riding in the beater. You know, I, okay. I, I had a Cavalier and I called it Chuck. And it was... What did you... You said you call, named it Chuck? I, I called it Chuck because it was always chucking people out of it. Um, any girl that came in, it chucked right out. You know, they didn't want to ride with you in a beater. So um, I always called it that. What advice would you give to people in my situation? Like if you talk to a girl and they leave because your Cavalier is not as cute as a, as a uh, Porsche or a very nice, highly expensive car that could be out there. I don't know. I just, I wanted a guy with ambition, but I was never like after the money. I just wanted somebody like I could hang with and, um, you know, that I connected with and I had fun with. And, you know, I don't know. I think I was just kind of like living in the moment and not really planning much. You're just having fun. You like somebody because they're cute. They got a nice butt. You like sports. You know, you can hang out. You can laugh. Like, you know, that type of thing. So I, I didn't give a shit about a Cavalier. I didn't give a shit if he had a car. I mean, it was a piece of shit. But we had a lot of fun in that Cavalier. And I don't care if he rolled up in a fucking Cavalier today. I'm, I'm ride or die, like A1 since day one. So that's just that's just me, though. I just wanted to ask that because, you know, it sounds like the dates were unique for sure. So here, here we're going to continue our little game that I have. I need you to rapid fire. Don't think about it. Don't okay. describe it. Tell me right now. Okay. Favorite Oreo? Um, golden. Oh, that's so disgusting. Did you yeah. say Golden. Golden Oreo. I didn't say golden Ugh. shower. Golden Oreo. But, wow. Uh, All right. To <laughs> toilet paper or wet wipe? <laughs> wet wipe. Once you enter my industry, it's always a wet wipe. Toilet paper, like, is not an option. I can't. I I'll bag it. I don't care. But I need a wet wipe. Favorite superhero? Um, Superman. Favorite supervillain? Uh, Harley Quinn. But she's kind of like... Good, I feel. Yeah, no, she's not at all. Bad. I fucking not love her. Not at all. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. If you were stuck, okay, in a situation and you had to call three mm -hmm. fictional characters to get you out, okay, who are your three go-to fictional characters? Uh, of course, um, Superman. Um, I don't really don't know what Thor does, but he looks really fantastic. So I'm gonna go with Thor, and I don't. I don't want to see Batman it's so boring. I don't know. I, I don't know. Some sort of transformer just to do some wild and weird like robo shit. Like, I don't know. What's that one? The the oh god, I you know the big one, like uh can't think of his name. He's like at Optimus Universal Prime? Studios. Yes! Megatron? I don't know, he's not really a hero. Optimus he's Prime? Not a, Megatron. Yeah, I, I I don't know why. You just you just have to throw some bad in there. I get it. I I get it. I get it. Yeah. All right. If you were to take a female out on a date, what type of food would you go and get her? What type of food would you go? Which restaurant would you go to? And this is like a, like one and done. This is a guarantee. This place is going to get them there. Mm. It would probably have to be something, uh, some sort of seafood like sushi because you know, or like oysters is like natural aphrodisiac, right? You just, I want to see a little tongue action, some healthy stuff, not too much, a little bit light so she's not feeling tired. Don't want to overload her with carbs. So if we go to, right? Yeah, something like uh, slippery and, sorry, that's, ASMR. That's unique. You know, I, I've, I've listened to you guys on your, uh, your prepping for your scenes, um, especially the one that was very viral, the uh, – the butt scenes and uh, you have to eat clean to make sure everything is uh, not coming out wrong. We talked about it 
on our butt pleasures episode back in the beginning where we went in very depth and uh, you have to eat clean to make sure everything is clean um, or else it would be very foul and dirty. So uh, I get that sushi, clean fish, um, prepping it out. My question to you rapid, rapidly, I want to scale rapid fire. I love it. We got the top Mm -hmm. five. We're going to go one for one listing your top five, starting from the worst drink a female can order to the like the lightest drink where you know the level of crazy number one drink you're so out number with number one is craziest yeah absolutely okay. let's actually go backwards let's go backwards least craziest drink <laughs> where you go out with a chick and she grabs a, a drink what's the least craziest wine oh that's wine good wine is good. like a very light kind of like okay like i'm just kind of wanting to feel a little good but stay in control but maybe it looks sophisticated even if she's really not so wine then we'll go to like a mojito. That's got a little kick, a li- you know, it's somewhat healthy, but you know, it's got a, it's light and refreshing. Doesn't make you feel so bad, right? And then there's that third drink, right? When these, <laughs> I almost said these bitches because that's so terrible. When these, cause, and that could be male or female because I've met many bitch ass men, okay? So we're gonna leave it at that. But um, the third drink, it would be, um, I don't know, something mixed with like a tequila. I don't know, like a maybe just like a margarita, you know, but it's like not like a typical margarita, like in a standard size. It's like a boat. One of those big boys. All right, she's getting the big she's ready. So some sort of like margarita. She's going hard, right? Just I only had one, but it's it's life size, okay? The next one, oh my gosh. I don't know the name of it. What is it? Is it the, the, it's like an iced tea drink on steroids, but with alcohol. What is it called? A Long Island? Yes, a Long Island. Those, I found, like, oh, just a Long Island iced tea. Like, they're pounding them down big time. And I would say probably the craziest of all is, a ch- I shouldn't say this, and I could be totally wrong, but just in my experience with some of the people, any type of alcohol like a mixed drink with whiskey or just with whiskey you got to be careful you know just be very careful people get mean on that so yeah you just you just got to tread lightly with those ladies and men too they can get mean it's definitely on both sides it's about both sides you know my my five rating um alcoholic beverages when i do go out um you you know you go in there uh with me like I don't think I, I, I look away from the crazy side. If you're ordering something vodka, like <laughs> vodka seltzer, vodka, you know, water, vodka tonic, tonic. like yeah. you're not too crazy. You can control your stuff, but it's putting red flags in my head because like, you know, why are we drinking? Why are we drinking this party drink where we're sitting at the dinner table? Like you got some stories. We got some shit going on. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Yeah. Then yeah. going in, in number four. Um, where things Mm -hmm. start getting a little bit more crazy, where I start wondering like what's going on. If you're using any type of gin mixed drink, if you have a a gin inside your drink, you're mixing it gin and juice, gin and anything. If you're at dinner table mixing gin, that gets some red flags going. You know, it gets some red flags going. Even if it's like, even if it's like you're doing a gin or gin martini, things like that. I don't know what it is, but it just feel like you're hiding something. Because, like, who the fuck enjoys Mm. gin, especially when you're eating, like, steak Uh, or you're eating anything like that? Um, It just – it makes me go up there. Then we start going deep. I say if you start ordering wine, and this is the reason why I know you're crazy is because if you order wine, you can drink a little bit more wine than Mm. you can with – than other shots or or beers or liquors like that. If you're drinking wine, you're going to drink more and more, and then the real you is going to come out. And it could be one or the other, you know, like I'm going to be honest, like, it, I've seen some pretty bad. I've seen some pretty bad stuff um, Two, if they drink whiskey, if a chick orders any mixed drink with whiskey, mm-hmm. it could be rum or it could be Dang. Jack and Coke. It could be, uh, you know, Woodford on the rocks. It could be uh, Maker's Mark Neat. I don't care if you're ordering whiskey, red flags. you got a lot of issues in your life. you got a lot of problems because why the hell are you going that hard and we're at dinner? You know, it's a date, right? And then maybe she's nervous number, though. Number one thing is when a female orders a shot, 
especially a shot that she wouldn't order if she's buying it herself. So if she's going in and she's trying to get um, a shot of, mm. you know, like if she's going to try to get a, a, sh- a shot of tequila, what, what's that expensive brand that's been going around that everybody likes? Uh, Don Julio. And, you know, Don Julio, 1942, things like that. If you buy that bitch, buy what you're going to drink if you were buying for it. <laughs> if anybody's bitch. putting shots and stuff at the dinner table, we're done. Yeah. Like I already know you're not here for anything. Like you are crazy. Because again, all these ones that I'm going for is like we're at a dinner. You don't have to drink. If you See, drink, you didn't I say that it. though, Julian. Uh uh-uh. uh. You didn't say that. You just said ordered like a drink at the bar. See? It doesn't it, well, even yeah. a drink I said if you they're ordering drinks, it could be any any scenario. Because any of these scenarios apply. But, if we're out yeah, drinking, but who really if we're does out, it at dinner? Uh-uh. But even if we're not at dinner, it. even a if true. we're not at dinner, we're out and you're fucking ass ask me for okay. Don Julio 1942 for the first drink I'm buying you. You're fucking crazy and you're out of your mind. Buy it what, what you're going to pay, not what I'm going to pay. Like, I don't but give a fuck. Maybe she's how not much expecting money you to pay. I'm not paying you. Like, that? I'm not expecting you to pay. If it's our first date, I have no expectations. This is my I scenario. Think a lot of people. All right, this is my scenario. You're adding rules to my scenario. I said top five of crazy when someone orders something that you're with, that you're okay. out with, that you're doing stuff. You're out here saying she doesn't expect you to pay. Look, you're you're, you're breaking the rules. Breaking the rules. Switching it up. On all right. There, right? <laughs> um, okay. I got your five. My bad. I should have just like listened. You're attacking. Yeah. All You're right. Attacking Rapid it. fire. And just like the start of this or the other podcast earlier, um, earlier in the week is you started with tequila, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. I'm going to revert back. I did. Took I a did. shot of tequila before the podcast started. One shot. Okay. Just one. Ugh. Fuck. I hate that shit. That's a shot. Wait, wait, wait. But wait. That was all that was available. I had one just to like. Woosa. And I don't do that normally. I don't even know why I did it. A little frustrated, okay? Don't try to make me feel guilty. You can't. I don't give you permission. That, mm-mm, not happening. Look at, I'm right yeah. by contact you. So, yeah, you're crazy. Right now. Sorry, we already know but, you're crazy. Um, but, yeah, tequila, crazy bitches. Put me in old. Coming at you. Let's, Put you let's in get old. into this. We'll, we'll play a little bit more games as uh, I, I the podcast starts I went, opening I up later on in, in the series. But, uh... You know, I, I kind of want to go in and, and talk a little bit about like the first time, you know, you and I met in your birthday party uh, many years ago. I think, you know, it's about time that people want to listen to this and they want to hear what happened. So I forget what year it was. What year was it that you were at Crazy Horse with your birthday party? Was that 19? Oh Honestly, I feel like they're all running together at this point. I just keep leveling up. Keep leveling up. Okay? I think I think it was nineteen because we, we partied on your on no, the pandemic. Um, I think it was two thousand nineteen. I'm pretty sure it was two thousand nineteen. I was in Vegas at the time. I, uh, you know, I was still going through my injury, and I was recording on the streets of Fremont like a couple weeks prior, where I had an episode on my podcast called "Beat My Meat," and I would tape various types of meats on my body and walk up to people and ask them if they want to beat my meat. And then I would lift up my shirt when they freak out and I'd give them a boxing glove and they'd just punch me in the stomach, beating my meat. And it was a cool sponsorship little thing I had going. Uh, It was pretty funny. And uh, I had work the next day and I get a phone call from Eric Anders and he was like, hey, man, I have a a birthday party I'm at, man. I I think you should come out here. And I was like, dude, I don't I don't go out anywhere. Where is it at? You know, it's pretty late. I got work. He goes, man, it's that crazy horse. And I was like, crazy horse? What's crazy horse? He's like, it's a strip club. And I, it lives down the street from my house, and I didn't even think of it. I'm not a strip club goer. I don't go to any of them. I kept telling him, no, I didn't want to go. It's like, you know, 1130 when he's, you know, calling me, and he's like, bro, you, you should you need to come. And I sat back. I was like, okay, cool. I, I, all right, I'm on my way. And I sat back, and I was like, man, I'm not really going. I, I don't want to go to this. And the next thing I do is I get a text like 30 minutes later from Eric. He's like, hey, man, are you on your way? Yeah. I said, yeah. He goes, okay. So I just threw my clothes on. I get ready, and I go, and I, and I arrive at the, you know, at Crazy Horse about, I want to say, like, it's probably 1230, almost 1 o'clock in the morning. And I go in there. I walk in. I was like, hey, so talking to the hostess, mm-hmm. I, I'm here. Um, I'm supposed to be here for a birthday party. I'm meeting my friends. Like, um, do you know where they're at? She's like, Hey, they're, they're at Kendra's. 
And I was like, who the fuck is Kendra? And I was like, I don't, I don't know if that's her. I tried calling Eric and his wife, but their phones were dead. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> She's like, Hey, just go up here and you can walk around and try to find them. So I'm walking around this place and I fucking swear to God, I walked a mile. I walked a mile inside of this fucking maze trying to figure out where it's going. I still don't know what's happening. Like, I don't know what it is. I can't get a hold of Eric. It's about 15 minutes go by and I'm still wandering the place. I get back to the front. I'm about to leave. I'm fucking pissed at this time because I didn't want to come out. I didn't want to do any of this. And I get to the host table and I go to walk. She stops me and she's like, hey, did you find him? I was like, no, I, I didn't find my friend. She's like, hey, look, I promise you, I think they're probably up there. You should go up into Kendra's party and go look for her. I was like, fuck, all right, you know, I'll try it one last time. So I turn around and I, I go walk in this area to where you have, and you're like a VIP section. It's an elevated, you have to go up the stairs into this back room. And as I walk up the stairs at this time, I look straight ahead and sitting on the couch, I see Andy Ruiz. You know, he was the champion, just won the belt, knocked out Joshua, and just won the belt. And I see him right there. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I look over and I see Dolph Ziggler and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then all of a sudden I'm standing there in the middle of the walkway and this girl walks up to me and goes, hi, I'm Kendra. How are you? And I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm Julian. I'm trying to find my friends. And then at this point in time, I fucking like I swear it's like a movie scene because Eric Anders like appeared from behind you. Like he was hiding behind you and he grew up right behind you. Like I didn't see him when I saw you and he goes, uh, he goes, Hey, what's up? I said, Hey, what's going on? And, uh, you know, they, he ended up introducing us and I was just like, I didn't know who the hell you were. And the first thing I tell Eric, I was like, bro, that's, that's Andy Ruiz. You know, and I see T. Joe Dillashaw's manager there, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm, like, starstruck by these guys, and I didn't talk to any of them, you know? Aww, I see Dolphin in there, and, uh, you know, we started uh, talking a too. little bit, and I was just like, what the fuck is going on? We're at a strip club. We're doing all this stuff, and, like, you walk up to me, you're like, hey, sit down, have fun, mingle with people. If there's any stripper, this is the quote you said to me the first time I ever met. If there's any stripper you like and you want to take home, just pick her out and let me know, and I'll get it set up for you. And I was like, <laughs> what i meant like a, a nice time you know what no i, I did not like, know what you meant don't you dare put that evil on me you said you said anyone you want to take home you know just let me know and i was just like what the fuck did i just walk into no this whole time i had no idea who you were i had no idea your background i have no idea what are, what are you doing over there yeah, going out some fucking glasses i'm putting on my glasses fuck yeah these are fucking dope this is Mid podcast, you pull on some glasses, trying to hide your face. So yeah, um, like I said, you know, it was just kind of it's kind of crazy to me because I know you're you're saying that you know a lot of people celebrate birthdays the same. Like no, people don't have the type of clientele at their birthday parties. They don't have like dude. I, I remember we were sitting at your birthday. We're on around in a story and we we're all talking. And like strippers were coming over and wanting to be a part of our conversation. They didn't even want to work because we were getting so many like fucking wild stories about police officers. And, you know, a lot of your friends there were, you know, high in the police. I don't want to say station. I would like say SWAT, something like that, or special yeah. forces. I don't know what they were, but they were telling some fucking crazy stories. And the girls would come in and start telling some of their crazy stories, not of like anything you know, anything like police related, but more of like sexual related. And we had like, uh, we had like probably 10 or 15 people around in a, in a circle, just hanging out there. There's tits hanging everywhere. There's famous people walking around. Everybody's loving you. Everyone's telling their stories, but this type of interaction I've never had anywhere at any other party where it was just so open and honest and free. Like people were not afraid to tell their deepest, darkest secrets in this circle. It was like the trust tree. Right? And I didn't know no one but like two people. It was a great night. It was it was busy. I always feel bad because it's like, you know, it is a bit of work um, for me. So I always feel bad. Like even like like with you know dinner thing. I'm so grateful like you know that we're able to do it. But I don't like being pulled away or feel as if oh here I am like it, like because there's always like a promo and I just feel like so 
eh. like I don't you know I don't I don't want my friends to feel awkward so I try to like include them in as much as I can like walk the red carpet like I had my one girlfriend walk the red carpet for AVN like two years in a row I gave her a fake fucking name people were taking pictures that's another story I can't Donna Lamore Jenny you know you know what's up but um so for me I always like try to just like include them and have fun because I feel cheesy and um I don't know whatever but it was great it was fun I, I mean I had a good time it was cool I mean Eric had fun I love Yasmin she is like the most beautiful soul on this earth yeah it was a good time a little bit of a blur the cake was good yeah I mean literally and uh figuratively I guess I had some cake ate some cake enjoyed some cake so yeah so it was a good time yeah, good times. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely one of those that I wish we would have had a camera, um, like videotaping us and videotaping mm-hmm. all around. That way, people can see what I saw and interact the way that I interacted and and have that. And I think that's what, something we can do on this podcast is when we do attend a party, we can have you know our own camera crew as we're talking around and, and cutting bits and pieces and showing them. Eventually, that's that's the purpose of this podcast is showing our lifestyle but also showing how fucking awesome it is and how amazing it is being around you and the people that you bring because you have great people. Like I'm telling you, Dolph is like the coolest person in the world. And Nettie is amazing. Um, Professor X on top of the world. And then everybody is sprinkled in between, you know, it's been a, it's been a highlight. So we need to figure out a time where we can go out and party with all these people and get it on camera. Mm. So the world can see how y'all get down. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be awesome. And, you know, I've uh, kind of been in this weird place for like the past year. Um, and that's cool. It's good. It's a process. Life's a process. But it's a good thing, um, you know, getting better, learning um, each day about uh, how to keep moving forward. However, I would love for you guys to like really, really meet like, you know, my three four closest girlfriends that I don't even like get to see as often as I would love to and they are like my ride or dies like they are incredible like so I just I need to get them away from like what they normally do like mom wife work and I need to get them it doesn't have to be Vegas like a crazy weekend and just get like a group of like you know my Vegas people but I mean I love Nettie Nettie stayed at my house and like, you know, Nick's great and stuff. But um, I want both worlds to come together. And that would be freaking epic. Like, that would be awesome. So we're going to do that. That's on my bucket list for 2020. I love that idea. I love that idea. Look, everyone watching and listening that's made up to this point, I really appreciate you guys. Kendra, I know she appreciates you as well. I would like for you guys to comment below and tell us a location outside of Vegas that we can go and film the clashing of the exciting world of the athletes, the celebrities with the close and personals of Kendra. Let us know. Please like, subscribe, and follow Kendra. Give them a little love and tell them what's up. Yes. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I know sometimes I drag on. It's like get to the point. But thank you so much. We do appreciate you guys tuning in and um, like and subscribe. And tell us, you know, what you would like us to do next. Well, who, what, when. And uh, yeah. Thanks, guys.